So four months ago, Laurel asked if I would be um, available to show in the months of April and May at the museum, and I was excited to do so. Uh, Grand Forks is my hometown, and I hadn't been back for about 20 years. I'd heard a lot about North Dakota in recent news because of the oil boom that was happening in the western part of the state, and so some of our early conversations um, revolved around creating new work for this exhibition. And that work would actually be um, video work um, trying to investigate and understand something about what was happening in the western part of the state, which was being transformed very quickly. So uh, I came about three weeks before the show opened, and I and the filmmaker Rodrigo Valenzuela, who is a friend of mine and an artist, um, went out to Williston, Stanley, Tioga, Newtown, Arnegard, and investigated what was going on, and really looking at it um, not so much with a journalistic eye, but kind of in a space of saying we don't really know what's happening, and we just really want to observe and understand um, the impressions and kind of how we felt. We were struck by the sense that um, you could approach one of these oil pumps or one of these sites and it was completely pristine in the sense that it was either agricultural or ranch land and then all of a sudden it would start to be um, intensive construction and, and trucks and oil um, pumps and um, and then it would quietly quiet, um, quiet down again and again it would be this sort of like long pastoral scene. So it wasn't like the entire landscape was ravaged but it was these punctuated moments of high intensive activity with the kind of western North, North Dakota that I think people really remembered um, just from even like five years ago. So that created the framework of thinking about um, um, fracking and um, the idea that things are split open um, and that there's a division between what we remembered about these cities and what they are now, um, as well as the landscape, kind of how this landscape can be unadulterated and then all of a sudden there's this massive change going on and then again there's um, an uh, unadulterated part. Um, one of the works is called Boom with a small b. Um, and small b with a period actually. So the idea was that it was kind of a, a quiet sensibility of what that boom was and it's a two-channel video projection and on one side is this meditative rhythmic continual quality of um, panning and panning that landscape so through the ranches and um, you know fields and the trees and then going into this meditative rhythmic quality of the pumps going all day and all night. Um, and then on the other side was a screen where um, you would be panning actually like a, a cityscape of Williston as it is now. So you would pass through the uh, gas stations and the oil tanks and the places where they store the trucks and these big warehouses. Um, and they would be going simultaneously. Um, so if you were a viewer, you would kind of see one thing moving this way and then another moving that way. And that would transition actually into other things that we saw. So the constant traffic would be going on this side, and then again you would have this panning, long pastoral image on the other side. Um, the other interesting part of that video is that there's a moment where we actually see the trailer homes that are um, dotting the landscape all over um, this area, and they're really ingenious kinds of architecture because it's basically um, uh, these new waves of caravans and people would drive out with these things, they'd park it somewhere and then they would create all these different external structures to um, survive the winters in North Dakota. So that's another sort of panning um, um, landscape. Um, the video is about 38 minutes long and the last 15 minutes are actually, one side is this continual um, uh, loop of the uh, oil trains or the oil tanks going on and then the other one is one of those natural flares that when they drill and they don't have the pipeline that actually can um, capture the natural gas it just has to burn off. So it really is true that when you see these landscapes and you kind of look across the panorama you will see these like um, flames just in dotting the landscape and it's incredible and it's beautiful and it's also destructive at the same time and you see and you understand both parts of that. So. Um, for 15 minutes, you just have um, one aspect, which is um, these black oil tanks on, a, uh, on the railroads, and then on the other side, you see 
this natural flame um, in the sunset getting darker and darker and darker, but the only thing is that it keeps um, firing. So that's one piece. Um, another body of work that we were doing is um, a series of video portraits. And the idea of the video portrait is that beyond the single snapshot, um, a, a continuous video portrait can actually portray a different kind of reality um, and an understanding of the person. So the format is that we start filming somebody and then we continue that filming for a certain number of minutes and it's unedited and then also not slowed down or um, altered in any way. Um, these video portraits are about seven minutes and they range um, from somebody who uh, works actually on a rig to welders to a heavy machinist who now is a bartender to a blackjack dealer in one of these small towns. And um, in all of the cases, they're people that we got to know and talk to, whether they were in the bars or in the man camps or in a cafe. Um, and we would just listen to their stories and then we would ask them and say, would you um, be interested in sitting for a video portrait? And they would always say, wait, what's that? Um, but we would try to explain to them that it was beyond something that was simply um, like a painting or a photograph, but it was trying to create a connection with someone else where when they looked at the camera, the viewer would actually imagine that they were almost looking at um, like making eye contact with you and that it was an opportunity for somebody to really watch someone else um, uninterrupted for an extended period of time which is not something that you can actually do in real life. Um, I'd say generally people were about 70% accepting of it and then 30% saying no and I felt like that was actually really good um, odds that a lot of people seemed open to it even if they didn't quite know what they were doing and that was um, it was really informative to really understand their perspectives and where they were coming from and why they actually came out to Williston and um, that western part of the state. Um, another part of the, uh, there's actually another short seven minute video piece called Giantess. And if you Google the word Giantess, what you get are giant women who um, like ravage city landscapes. <laughs> and that title is was really interesting for me because I like the idea of these giant oil rigs that were almost all run by men. In fact, I'd say probably 99.9% .9 is run by men, but they're these, you know, giant kind of um, protruding things in the landscape that are drilling down and also, you know, extending upwards. Um, but what we imagined was that the rig was um, not populated and run by human beings, but somehow that the energy that was driving the rig was actually things like economy and industry and just desire for um, a better life for the rig even. And so there's actually no people in that video, but um, machinery is vibrating and it's moving and it's, and it's spinning. And that energy is captured um, um, in this seven minute clip. Um, and then the final piece that was created for this exhibition that um, that goes on the idea of the oil reserves is um, core samples. So a core sample is obviously a geological um, analysis of the different layers of soil and rock. And um, I wanted to think about core samples of a person's life and how they would think about those layers of their life and their phases. And um, so we picked um, five individuals. Um, one of them is my father, another one is a uh, CEO of an oil company, a third one is um, Art Greenberg who is a longtime steward of Grand Forks and a developer here, um, a fourth one is a sculptor who actually helped me fabricate the piece, and then a fifth one is uh, a trucker actually from the Arnegard area. And um, each one of them would tell me kind of the story of their life and how they perceived the different periods and we would figure out how to construct a core sample with the different phases of their life being different colors. The breaks would kind of mean either a physical break or even a relational break. And um, it was really about their perception of their story as opposed to this very linear time scale. So if they felt like a period of their life felt really, really long, even though it was maybe only six months, it actually occupied a lot, a, a very thick layer on the core sample. So um, each one is about 
um, what I say is they're about the weight of a human body and about the size of a human body. And it didn't matter how old they were because in my mind I felt like your life is complete up to the point that you live and so you, um, you are a full human being even if you're 25 years old or 80. So those are the new pieces that were created for this exhibition. Uh, we also recreated a piece called Showers in the main gallery and um, it's rice on um, thin lines of monofilament. It's a site-specific piece, so you have to recreate it every single time. And um, I and the museum staff spent two days, three days maybe, um, recreating this piece. And we wanted to activate the space because it's basically two floors, almost 20 feet. And it has all this beautiful um, overhead lighting and side lighting that comes in naturally. And I just wanted to imagine that almost like the heavens had the, you know, all of these strings coming down and then coming down to this very beautiful black floor, which would accentuate the, the rice. So um, we created it in a way that basically it also is split. So, um, so there's basically a, an aisle in between and one side of it has rain and the other side has rain and it's all pointing to the northwest, which is apparently the way the wind blows in Grand Forks. And um, when it's all done, We'll take it apart and um, it's gone.